Now, if you go a little bit further to make some more complicated constructions, instead of working with primes and prime and primitive, you work with semi-prime and semi-primitives. So, so, what is the definition? So, you have R, it is an algebra, so it's a definition. And it's called a subdirect product. So R is a subdirect product. of some algebras R E where I is from some set of indices. If if R I is a R module some idea of M I and if you take the product if you take the product so you have a natural homomorphism phi I from R to RA with the kernel of phi I equals to MI. And if you consider to the product of this RI, um, then um, the natural, um, um, then the projection, then um, this is embedding. So if you consider, for example, uh, okay, this is not exactly the direct product because the direct product you have, mm -hmm. for example, R, you can map this to R plus R diagonal. You have R goes to R and R, this pairs. So R, of course, is embedded in this sum. It maps on this, so this is a subdirect product of these two, but this is not isomorphic to the direct sum. So this is a little bit difference in the feeling, the notion. And if R is if R is a subdirect product of primitive algebras. And this is called semi-primitive, MIT. If this is a subdirect product of prime algebras, then this is semi-prime. So mm, my purpose will be The theorem of Posner. So the goal this is to prove the theorem of Posner, which is that if R if R is prime and um, with center C plus pi with, with C this is the center of R I, I add that the algebra has one here and if we take um, the elements of the center which are uh, non-zero then if you take this object the vocalization, so this is a finitely dimensional, simple S1, S inverse C algebra, which is, and these two algebras, R and S inverse R, satisfy the same So this is the theorem of post, which initially was proved using the theorems of Goldie, not as I want to do this, 
and, and, and some uh, um, um, uh, non commutative vulgarization using the rec conditions. But here, of course, there are some things which are not clear preliminary, for example, if C is the center, we want to know that the center has no zero divisors. We have to prove this one. We also have to show, because otherwise we cannot guarantee that this is a field. You know, see all these things go, and the proof is, which I want to do, this is not so direct, it uses Yeah. What does one mean by the center if you, uh, if you don't have a unit? Just the you see, I, I put one here. Oh, I see. Okay. In order to be sure that. You see, in the book by Formanek, the part of Formanek, he has two notions. One of them is ring, which means that one is in R, and the other is R and G when this is not. Thank <laughs> you. So, okay, maybe this is I <laughs> is not in R. <laughs> and the other question is: is is, uh, is R itself finally generated as a module over C? It's not clear a priori, but is it, is it, is it clear even at the end of the game? Oh, I'm not sure. In the general case, mm, you may have some bad things. So I think that the center itself may be not finitely generated, for example. I think that even this doesn't happen because. Mm, you see, mm, if you take mm, the free algebra and you consider the ideal um, of all polynomial identities for uh, the matrix algebra of size n over a field k. Then this ideal, then the factor algebra has no zero divisors. So the factor algebra, I write this here, T of M N. This factor algebra has no zero divisors. So here, it's prime. It has one, so this is not finitely generated. This is not finitely generated over its center. But if you take all this stuff, then everything will be okay. Even I think if you take here x to be a finite set, you have something similar. Even in this case, I think that the, the center is not finitely generated. This is more or less clear. And also, you know, I think that the, the factor algebra, the algebra should be not finitely generated more over the center. But I think that here you have something which is not finitely generated. If you take here the center and you take the field of fractions, you, this have here this will be uh, some division algebra, some universal division uh, division algebra, which is central simple of dimension n squared. And it serves as a counterexample one of the conjectures about um, in, in, in the law theory when you have a central in, 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 in central division algebra. So this I think this is okay as an example. But you see, So this is simply the goal.
But I want to do this step by step with some, first of all, I want to make some exercise. And to leave this as an exercise. So if, if R is an algebra with one, and if you consider some polynomial, with coefficients from R, so the algebra is not obligatorily commutative. So R is maybe non-commutative. In general. And here, T commutes with R. And if we're additional, you know that R, I, and R, J commute for all I, J. And if R is invertible in this ring, R, T, then R, zero is invertible in R, and if n is bigger than 0, then Rn is new. So this is something which I think everyone knows. Here the condition that this is not neg necessary commutative, not essential because here we have the elements commute. But nevertheless, this is something which is well known. And I want to prove the theorem of Amitsur 